Greetings, greetings, Valerie here. It's Valerie here. <laughs> I was just looking at Teddy, my dog, who's in the corner there. I was saying to Teddy yesterday, um, I was asking him, Teddy, my dog, um, what he thought and felt about COVID-19 and um, he didn't have much to say. I, I can tell you, though, uh, having seen this uh, pop up on the press feed, that he is going to be one happy dog once um, if we go to being at home quite a lot and it's already happening in stages, just waiting to see what school has to say. Um, all the pets uh, are going to be very, very happy, aren't they? <laughs> um, I put up a post late last night, 11.30? PM just before I went to bed. Um, I wanted to capture the thought and then I wanted to return. So I shared the thought uh, and then now I want to return to unpack that with you, right? So um, anybody else feeling like everywhere you go, it's like the COVID-19 conversation. It's important to have and yet it's like flooding everywhere. Okay, so me too. I'm feeling like that's just coming from everywhere. Um, and of course, um, you know, we're all still human beings, right? It's, it's not like life takes a holiday from COVID-19. Uh, so, you know, you still got to do the regular stuff, right? The cooking, the cleaning, the um, trying to figure out how you're going to get your groceries and all of that. And, you know, you can't, you, you don't stop living. So you've got that. And then, of course, I'm sure you're also absorbing everybody else's worry and anxiety. Now, I actually have some issues with my thumbs. Um, I've been a bit naughty. I really should go and get it checked out. Um, but I can't text anymore. Um, I get sore thumbs, right? So all the messages that are coming, I literally can only like do that's tough. Hope you feel better. Get some rest. Like, because it hurts. I can't actually text anymore. And then you can go. So um, I do have some limited capacity to connect. And so the best way for me to connect is actually to talk to people, right? To pick up the phone and talk and things like that. Um, so, you know, you've got your friends and your family um, and that you have some limited. I can't keep up with the text messages that are coming. Um, I don't know about you, but every time someone says, don't touch your face, I touch my face. Like, I think that's um, increased exponentially as well. And then you think, oh, my gosh, what are people going to think? I'm constantly thinking, um, you know, touching my face. Um, and then to, you know, the serious decisions that need to be made. Right. Um, serious decisions, including I have to say, let's be aware of this, everybody, including a really heavy social conscience, really heavy, like really heavy, right? Beyond uh, the distant future of sustainability and looking after envi our environment, the heavy social conscience that just comes about thinking about all your every actions. Are you like this too? Please let me know. Uh, like I go into the supermarket and I'm, I'm realizing that rather than, um, and this is not because I'm a saint, um, but it's probably the reason why people like me burn out. Uh, when I go to pick up um, a package of, what did I pick up today? Because you can't get rice and stuff, right? Oh, I, I can't remember. Anyway, I picked something up and then had five questions in my head. Who else is going to need this? What quantity do I actually really need? Um, how can I do this in such a way that, you know, I leave enough for other people? Oh, I know what it was, but I can't tell you what it was. <laughs> so it's like, oh, man, the heavy social conscience is on me. I get into the lift and because we're in Gordon and there's a fairly um, senior community and there's like, you know, three elderly people there. And I'm like, I can't do social distancing in the lift. What should I do? Do I squeeze my butt into the corner? Do I crouch? This is like, oh, come on, come on. Take a deep breath for me, for me. Okay. So, I'm noticing, therefore, that yesterday, right, I pushed past my limits for for work, okay? I wanted to be present for all the important people in my world. Um, that included my church, uh, my husband, who's a minister, my kids, the dog, probably, 
probably the vacuum cleaner that I now seem to think is alive. I got us a little robot vacuum cleaner and I don't know, I have this ability to make inanimate things alive. Don't ask me why, but I'm also feeling responsible for the vacuum. And at that point, you know, Valerie, something is not quite right with you. You have sunk into a different level. And we come home and, you know, um, so uh, hubby and I, um, you know, we've known each other a long time and we sync our work times. That's just how we do it. That's how we skateboard. Skateboard means we micro adjust how we do things and we tend to sync when we work and when we don't. And we do a, a little micro check in. And last night he needed to do some things. And so I said, OK, well, I'll sync with you so that I work as well. And then we can both go to bed together. And I'm sitting there and uh, we're currently binging on um, The Mentalist and I'm watching The Mentalist and I'm doing work and I know that I'm deep di I'm, I'm shallow diving into rocks, right? There's no creativity. I'm not working in flow. I'm looking at numbers. I'm looking at, um, you know, a bunch of stuff that's not creative. And all I'm doing is getting into a fret. Now, if any of my team are listening to this, please don't worry. <laughs> okay, You know that you will always get the truth from me, right? This is what I say to my team uh, most of the time. I will say you, you will never get a lie from me. I will always tell you the truth. You never have to worry whether or not um, you've done something to upset me because you will know straight away. Not because I yell, but because I don't hold these things. And so... I'm, I'm shallow diving. I'm hitting rocks. I get to 11.35 and I say to myself, you cannot go on. This cannot go on because if you allow this sort of thinking to creep in now, it is going to sink in. And what is that thinking? I've got to push, right? I've got to ignore my cues, ignore how I'm feeling physically, ignore how I'm feeling emotionally because people need me. And so I've got to push. I've got to push. And sometimes I flip into this really weird thinking You've given birth. It's just the same thing. <laughs> just keep pushing. That, that is not correct. Do not think that way. So I, I say to hubby, he's still working. And I say, look, I'm going to log off. I'm clocking off. Um, I'll see you on the other side of the morning. Because usually we like to sync together and head up together. So I'm sitting on my bed. 11.36, I think, and I just am aware that I say this to myself, Valerie, there is only one of you. There is only one of you. And I unpack that a little bit and think, what am I thinking with this? Why does this thought pop into my head? There is only one of you. And then comes the, the following, right? There's only one of you. Don't behave like there are seven of you um, because you ain't going to get them. And there is only one of you. And... And people are going to need you, not because I'm a savior, not because I'm anybody special, but because we're going to need one another, right? We, we're going to need one another and we still need one another. So there's only one of you. Don't behave like there's seven of you. Um, conserve pace. Uh, get some perspective. Get some rest, right? Pour, don't push from empty. Give from full. Full is going to look different during these times. Full is not going to look like what it would do. And that's okay. Reinvent full. Reinvent full. Rediscover what full can look like. This is a very long stream, but I'm just going to keep going because I'm on a roll. Reinvent what full looks like. Uh, reinvent what it means to be recharged. Reinvent what it means to connect. Reinvent what the new tomorrow looks like for you in terms of purpose. Reinvent what it's gonna what it looks like to be resilient. And I don't mean to sound like these are empty words, right? We're gonna have to, to reinvent even what resilience looks like for us. Um, and there's only one of you don't behave like there are seven of you. I'm doing a, a right now an online group with a bunch of people called Rapid Reset. And, you know, one of the things um, that I was, I put out a challenge, a big challenge to the people who are doing it online with me was to intentionally look for opportunities, not just to connect, but to ask for help.
Now, this may sound a little bit weird, right? Because when we feel vulnerable and when we feel helpless, the irony of it is we don't necessarily reach out for help when we need it or know what we need. We go into a reactive state, feel helpless, and then very often, you know, just it just feeds that cycle. But if we're intentionally at connecting with people and seeing them as a way to actually ask for help. Now, this may be a little bit weird. How do you ask for help if you're at home working from home or, you know, you can't go up because you're sick? Well, we have to reinvent. We're going to have to reinvent. We might need to send out a message that says, hey, anybody know the best way to get some carbs into my system if I uh, can't get, you know, I'm learning lots of new things today. I learned how to make ricotta cheese um, from somebody because I'm now thinking, uh, you know, how shall we do um, dairy? Uh, so we've got to reinvent the way that we do things, but not believe that we can replicate ourselves because you're not going to do it unless somebody knows something I don't know. Right, I shall leave it there for now. Um, looking forward to connecting with you and hearing from you. I've been very pleasantly surprised now that I'm relearning, reinventing, re relearning the new ways of tech that um, people can leave comments on the YouTube and the Instagram uh, feed that this goes out to. So I am thankful for your connection and connecting for me that way. And now that I have learned that such things exist like YouTube comments, I shall be responding. Take care.